Do you enjoy sewing, knitting, crocheting, and all those other fine arts? Well, if you do, then you've come to the right place. The young lady that hosts this program says she's a fool for such things, but I don't believe it for a moment. Whether it's making an afghan or simply sewing in a zipper, you can learn so much right here on Knitting Fool's Crafty Things. So the countdown is Knit 1, Pearl 2, and here we go. Good afternoon. I recently acquired this cute little kit. It just looks so inviting at the store. I was like, I have to have it. Um, it's $15, which for picking up a embroidery kit in a big box store is usually like, I mean, I go for the real cheap ones because I kind of farm them for cheap materials, like just cheap hoops to like put things up in. I mean, they're not usually any good to actually stitch in a lot of those hoops like at Wally World and places like that. But this was over at BJ's, which is like Costco or Sam's Club. And like I said, $15. I kind of looked it over and I thought, okay, so you get a six inch hoop, two pieces of fabric, two pieces of calico. Well, calico is a fabric, but you'll see what they mean. Two needles, 14 skeins of embroidery floss, iron-on transfer sheets for all of the projects, and a step-by-step -step book. And you can do two projects. You can do a cute little Bob Ross face in a landscape. I mean, they're all is. That's what he did was landscapes pretty much. But they give directions for all 10 projects. But they do make it pretty clear that there's only two that you can do. That's fine. And I thought to myself, well, 14 skeins of floss and a couple of pieces of fabric. They're probably not very big. It's probably an entire, like all four pieces of this stuff is probably equal to one fat quarter. So maybe at most a couple bucks worth of fabric. Now the skeins of floss, if they're a dollar a piece, that'd be 14, but they're usually more than that now. So I don't know, maybe 15 or $20 worth of floss. At least $15 worth of floss. So, and even if the needles are crap and the hoops crap, you're running ahead of the game there, right? Okay, so let's open it up and see. Because when they say skeins of floss, do they mean a full skein of floss? No. But, then again, you don't need a full skein of floss to do these projects. Alright, so here's the six inch hoop. Pretty good. Pretty sturdy, more sturdy than your average Wally World hoop. One thing, let me see where it is. Okay, I've, full disclosure, I've already opened this to make sure all the pieces were in it in case I need to return it. It's got a diagonal join here. I'm trying to see if it'll show up. It'll show up. See right there? And then right right there. You know, right there. Rough spots. I already got a splinter on my phone. Handle it, this thing. But that's okay. I mean, I could try um, smoothing it down with an emery board or something, but I don't think that's going to do very much. Um, because it's right there at the join. Really, it, you know, I guess you could try gluing it. I don't know. But really, it doesn't need that because I'm going to... This is sturdy enough that, you know, it's not like the really cheapo hoops. So, I mean, that's a dollar, two dollars worth of stuff right there. And the hardware. Oh, that's another thing. Let me show real quick. The hardware looks decent. No, um, no spot on there to put a, a screwdriver in to tighten it, but that's okay. For a hoop and a kit, I wasn't expecting that. 
but I'm going to buy that hoop and use it to embroider anyway. I'm not going to use it to, to display the finished pieces. I'll go down to Wally World or Hobby Lobby or something and get some get some cheaper hoops to, to um, display it in because they don't, you know, you have to worry about how taut everything is. You just got to make it look nice. Here are the two needles. You got an embroidery needle and a tapestry needle. So like a like a cruel needle. Well, not really a cruel needle, but but not really sharp either. But you know, just your regular standard embroidery needle. Eyes a little bit bigger. And a tapestry needle. Okay, now here's where what I was wondering. They said two pieces of fabric, two pieces of calico. Is this the calico? Not usually what I think of when I think of calico. But calico doesn't have to have a pattern. And that's what that is. It's just something to do a backing with. And this is supposed to look like linen or something. I don't know. But it's sort of like you can really tell the weave on it. And um, the needle is going to want to go into the holes because it's more loosely woven. Here, I'll show you the size. I'll open, open it out. So we're talking... Let me put it up against my little um, thing here. Um, about nine and a half square inch pieces. Nine and a half inches square. Okay. Two in this linen looking stuff, which I'm sure is not linen. But again, out of a kit. I'm not expecting Belgian linen, Belgian linen in a kit. Perfectly fine. And the weight of the fabric, how it feels, pretty good actually. And I'm going to take a minute and put this stuff away because I'm not starting the project just yet. I don't want the fabric to be messed up. Okay. Alright, so there's that. Alright, the floss. It's been in and out of this little bag a couple of times already. I'm not, I'm not really going into it. But suffice to say, I've checked these colors and the um, colors that they reference in the book. And it seems like these actually are actual DMC threads. That's impressive. Some of the skeins are not full skeins. I mean, this cream color is obviously very limited amount. That's okay. So... Is this $15 worth of floss? Mm, maybe not, but I mean, you get a lot of other stuff in here, so, so that's not too uh, concerning. It's pretty good, actually. You know, I want to do a little bit more on the floss later. Maybe I'll do a separate video on getting the floss ready, uh, you know, the thread management for a project, using thread drops, stuff like that. How I use them, anyway. And here's the book. And, it's, and this one's really cute, okay? They give you complete instructions for all the projects. Here's the little iron-on transfers. Oh, you can see one of the, you can see the, the light um, little shadow of where one of the irons, because this was laying in the box, and this started to transfer out of the um, box. Okay, whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but not only do they give you just the straight up how to make this stitch, how to make that stitch, they also give you some different techniques about how to take those stitches and make something. And there is at least one technique in here that I've not seen before. And all the different products. Um, I believe... Is that the one? Hang on a sec. Happy Accidents and Lake in the Valley. I believe that Lake in the Valley, the one on the cover here, is one of the ones you can do. Yes, indeed it is. That's one of the projects you can do. Um, now, the kit actually says that it's suitable for beginner and experienced crafters. Now, I don't know. I guess that's the... Um, the 
go-to phrase to call people nowadays, crafters. If you're just a general crafter and you've not embroidered before, don't go for this kit. Nothing against this kit. It's got a lot of stuff in it for 15 bucks if you're only buying it. You know, the book itself is quite nice. I mean, heck, if I was going to make a present for somebody who embroidered who really likes Barbara Ross, I'd give them the book. I'd go to DMC, order a bunch of threads to do all the projects, and make sure the needles gather in it. I'd buy, you know, DMC floss to make all the projects, get them a nice hoop from somewhere else. Oh, did I already say that I was going to bind this hoop? I don't know if I said that. I'm going to bind the hoop with full tape. That's why I don't have to worry about the rough stuff on a joint. But anyway, I, you know, I do that. And then keep the cheapo hardware and stuff for myself. But it's not a kit you're going to want to learn to embroider with. I mean, if the instructions seem pretty clear, but I can see it being frustrating for someone who's just starting out. And, you know, if they just want to learn how to do stuff, this isn't it. Although most of the time a kit is not really the best way to start learning about something. Okay, so I'm going to look at my notes real quick and see what I had wanted to say about it. Um, it says, uh, you have use for it after the kit supplies are gone. You still are going to have a use for the book. And the needles are decent. They're cheapo needles, but they're decent. They'll last for a little while, although I can see them bending pretty soon. But, you know, even after you've used up the fabric and the floss, you're going to have a use for the book, even if it is just to use it for eye candy or for ideas, something like that. That's fine. That's useful. It does only have materials for two projects. I wasn't really expecting that much more for that much money. I mean, that's, that's pretty good, actually. Although I do notice that the manufacturer suggested retail price on the little sticker said like $21.99 and they were selling it for $14.99 so at, if it had been $21.99 in the store I wouldn't have bought it but for $14.15 $15, yeah that's fine but okay so it only had the two materials for two but the outside of the kit and this is one thing I did really like the outside of the box did actually make sure you knew that there were only supplies for two inside, so you wouldn't open it up and say, oh, look, I can make ten things, and then open it up and be disappointed. You know from the get-go that it's only going to be two. Um, let's see, kit has good value for the money. I said that. Even after you use up the kit, yep, you've got use for it after the materials are gone. Um... I like that it has the iron-ons in it, the iron-on transfers, because that's a pretty convenient way to um, put the stuff on there. I don't have to go to a website and print something out and poke holes in it or trace it on my light board. Just, you know, put the, put the iron on it and go. It can be a little tricky, because if you don't do it right, it's going to be blurry, but take your time and, and it'll work for you. Um... Okay, and that's the end of my notes. But, yeah. Would I buy it for somebody? Mm, kind of a niche product. Although Bob Ross is kind of popular right now. I, I did get my daughter a Bob Ross coloring book for Christmas. I think she liked that. She's a grown-up. You know, that whole grown-up stress-relieving coloring thing. Which I understand. Totally understand. But I got her that. I think she kind of... Not that she's that big on Bob Ross, but I think it's enough of a meme that it was kind of funny. Um, and she likes coloring books, so there you go. Um, but if it's a person that, if you're buying it for a gift, I, you know, I'd be kind of iffy on that one. Just because it's kind of a niche thing. But if you like Bob Ross, and you like to embroider, and you've been embroidering for a little while, this is the kit for you. All right, thank you so much. That's my thoughts on the kit. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you next time.